Good afternoon, everybody. It seems that the epithelium is at standard stage today, so my financial interests I have nothing relevant other than with Alcon Wavelight, my collaborators. I'm working with John Canelopoulos and the team in Athens studying uh, epithelium. Today I'm going to present you a different aspect of uh, what the epithelium can tell us. The question is, this is dry eye. Can we have a quantitative evaluation of it? Is it possible? With uh, BUT and Shimmer test, we have high subjectivity, patient discomfort. I don't know how many of you can really trust that uh, it's a very pleasant uh, experience for the patient. I don't think that many of you will say it's a pleasant experience, nor we can quantify the results. So there have been quite a many studies discussing, discussing the dry eye and the criteria involved with that. This is a new picture. This is the beginning of an investigation that started by discovering that uh, patients that had dry eye presented this picture. We just heard from uh, the previous colleague from France that uh, the epithelium in a normal patient is in this picture green, which means it's at the mid level. This one is elevated. And this was not an observation once. Almost every dry eye patient presented with epithelia that were in the yellow and sometimes in the red. So we decided to study this approach to see can this elevated epithelium tell us a story, a story that can be easily identified by you because OCT is in the clinical practice. Every day we can have OCT. We screen every patient in our practice, no matter what. Everybody who walks in our practice receives symphony and cornea OCT imaging. And this is the question today. Can the epithelial investigation tell us the story of dry eye? This is the normal. It's green. It's everywhere green. Average, we studied that, we published in Cornea just recently, and we know the statistics of what a normal epithelium looks like. We know it very well. We studied over a large number of patients. These are the statistics, and it's in the current issue of the Cornea Journal. So let's see what's going on with the dry eye. The epithelium can be really shown here. This is almost a very accurate description. We can see almost a histologically picture. So the statistics that you can have here produced by the system, you don't really have to do any math, just observe the numbers, can be studied. This is the system and the resolution is very fast. Acquisition is less than a, a second for the eight scans. And these are the comparison results. Here we see a normal eye and this is a dry eye. The cornea itself is very similar. The numbers are almost, almost identical. The differences in the epithelium are clear. We can see the difference with a simple examination that takes just a few minutes of your time, and they can be stored, they can be followed. You can follow these numbers and see how is it going. The numbers between healthy and dry eye patients were statistically different. No matter what we examine, the average thickness the center epithelial thickness. Here we can see some examples. The blue is the control group, the healthy patients. The brown is the dry eye group. Almost everything we examined had statistically significant difference that can be picked up, can be evaluated in your office. Here is the difference in the, the thickness. This is the normal. This is the dry eye patient. These are again the numbers, normal and dry eye. And we just published in the American Journal of Ophthalmology, it's in press, it's coming up very soon, all these numbers, and we can see the normal and the dry eye. You can see it's elevated, and we have some reasons to believe that it's a very useful, for example, this is a patient that we treated for uh, acne rosacea with IPL in telspas lighting. You can see the difference in the skin, but how can you evaluate how good was the treatment for the dry eye? And if we can have this on OCT, you can see the epithelium being reduced, returning to normal, and you can have a quantitative number with that. That's very important for the practice. So what we see is a user-friendly procedure. We do it anyway. We always do OCT scans on every patient, no matter what, pre, post-operatively. We follow them. And it's a very predictive that can supplement your standardized dry eye measurements. Thank you very much.